I'm going to give you an example of operational research influencing policy and practice. And the example I'm going to give you is this study on payment for antiretroviral treatment and loss to follow up in Nairobi, Kenya. And this is the exact reference of this paper and this operational research study. I'll take you through it uh, broadly uh, and I'll take you back to 2005 to Kenya, which at the time uh, had a population of 31 million inhabitants. 1.2 million of them were estimated to be living with HIV and AIDS and at that time there were about 150,000 HIV AIDS related deaths. 233,000 people were in urgent need of ART at that time, but we had just about 46,000 people on this treatment, or 19% of those in need. Kenya thus ranked among the 20 top countries in the world with the highest unmet need for antiretroviral treatment. The Ministry of Health developed an ambitious plan to scale up antiretroviral treatment countrywide and try to cover this gap. But for justifiable sustainability related concerns, they encouraged all partners to actually introduce or to um, encourage uh, cost sharing. What this meant was that patients had to pay for antiretroviral treatment of about 500 Kenyan shillings or 10 US dollars per month. Bagati Hospital in Kenya, in Nairobi, was one of the first and pioneering sites to rule out antiretrovirals in the country. In February 2005, a very unusual situation developed in this hospital. All patients receiving antiretroviral treatment were offered similar services, but one cohort from the ministry at the time paid out-of-pocket expenses, and a second cohort, which, was, um, which received antiretroviral treatment free of charge, uh, existed. Our hypothesis was that maybe some of the patients who had to pay for treatment might not be able to sustain treatment for ART and this might result in patients dropping out from care. Or in other words, losses to follow up. And we all know that loss to follow up is an adverse outcome um, that affects treatment efficacy and eventual survival of the patient. So the research question we asked ourselves is that is there a difference in rates of loss to follow up between the cohort who pays for ART and those who receive it free of charge? And our objectives were to determine uh, if this difference really existed. I'll take you briefly through the methods. I'll touch the study design, the study setting, the study population, um, sample size, if relevant, data collection, statistical analysis and ethics approval, the key aspects of any operational research study methodology. So study design, this was a cohort study reporting on standardized treatment outcomes. The study period was February to June 2005 and the study site was Bagati District Hospital as you see on this slide. Now, before February 2005, there were two parallel ART clinics in the Bagati Hospital. There was an MOH clinic where patients had to pay 500 Kenyan shillings or 10 US dollars per month for ART. And there was an MSF clinic where patients received free ART. Now, the position MSF had taken at the time was that uh, all patients, uh, HIV AIDS patients requiring ART should receive it free of charge and because of the massive unmet need there was an understanding between us and the Ministry of Health that we will allow both systems to go forwards in the same hospital. 
However, from February 2005, with a view to handle, handing over these patients to the Ministry of Health by MSF, both the clinics and their staff were merged into one team, one big building, which was a new building, and all the protocols were standardised and made similar. So all patients were seen under the same roof, by the same staff, using the same protocols. Thus, we, in a certain way, had a very unique, um, controlled environment to, uh, in which these patients were being seen. From then on, all new patients had to pay for ART in this uh, hospital, uh, and there was an exemption only for patients already on the MSF waiting list for free ART prior to February 2005 uh, and who were not yet placed on ART. We had an agreement that these would be exempted and offered ART free of charge. So we had two cohorts. One was those new patients who uh, had to pay for ART. And we had another cohort which was receiving ART free of charge but from the waiting list of MSF. This offered a very unique environment to compare the two cohorts that except for payment received the same standard of care. Importantly, we discussed this very closely with our colleagues in the Ministry of Health and agreement was received at high level MOH uh, with the staff to actually try to work on a study that would look at these two cohorts and see if payment was actually detrimental to follow-up uh, and retention in care. The study population was all ART naive individuals aged over 13 years, starting ART between February and June 2005. Um, 13 years was the WHO cutoff for children at the time. In terms of data collections, the variables that we collected included social demographic characteristics, time on ART, payment for ART, and treatment outcomes. We entered all the data into an Excel data sheet, uh, and patient mastercards and registers were matched for the validation of data. Our sources of data included patient mastercards, ART registers, pharmacy registers and payment registers from the payment cohort uh, which was available in the pharmacy. In terms of statistical analysis, we looked at differences between groups using the uh, chi-square test or the Wilkinson rank sum test as appropriate and we used hazard ratios to compare loss to follow-up between the two groups. Our le level of significance was set at P equal to or less than 0 0.05. We received ethics approval both from MOH and the MSF Ethics Review Boards. And these are the results. Between February and June 2005, there were 435 individuals who started antiretroviral treatment, 265 paid, and 170 received this treatment free of charge. The summary of the results is that the incidence rates for lost follow-up per 100 person years among those who paid for ART and received ART free were 47 and 21 respectively. The adjusted hazard ratio was 2.3 with a 95% confidence interval as shown and the p-value was significant. The risk reduction attributed to free ART was 57%. This slide shows you the incidence rates, the cumulative incidence rates of loss to follow up between the two cohorts. The dotted line is the payment cohort and the bold line is the free ART cohort and each of those steps represent losses to follow up over time and time is represented in the x-axis. You will notice that the curves sort of stick together until about two months and then they split up. It is very likely that uh, those in the payment cohort are able to sustain payment for about two months, perhaps because they sell their chicken, their goats and so on and have some money after which uh, they are unable to sustain payment and when losses to follow up increase over time. And as you can see, this is a highly significant um, 
difference between the two cohorts in terms of loss to follow-up being higher in the payment cohort. And interestingly, our counsellors came to us and told us that five patients from the payment cohort had actually diluted their ART regimen to one tablet instead of two tablets daily in order to reduce the monthly cost, the cost of $10 of medication by half by per month. So our interpretation of the study is that payment for ART in a routine district hospital program setting is associated with a significantly higher rate of loss to follow up than when medication is offered free of charge. And some patients are probably unable to sustain payment over time and dilute their ART with important implications on treatment efficacy and resistance development over time. The recommendation we made was that ART should be offered free of charge in order to limit adverse treatment outcomes, promote treatment compliance and prevent the emergence of drug resistance. You might want to think about some of the strengths of this study. But in summary, this, these are some of the strengths of the study. Uh, it was done in a routine setting and thus likely to reflect the operational reality. All our ART outcomes between the two groups were standardised and thus they were comparable. And indeed, this was a very unusual and controlled situation to make a comparison. But importantly, the Ministry of Health was brought on board from the beginning and were convinced that we could work together uh, in the best interest of our patients. What were some of the weaknesses? You should think around those. I'll leave you a minute to think on that. But the uh, main weaknesses are that this is not a randomised controlled trial. It is based on simple observational data and therefore um, it has the limitations of every observational study. We do not have any data on socioeconomic status, educational level and cost of transport to the health facility between the two groups. And differences between those two groups might affect actually the losses to follow up. And we did not also know the reasons why patients still opted for treatment, for payment, when treatment was actually available free of charge. But of course, this was not an objective of this study per se. So what happened next? Well, the results and the implications were discussed with the hospital director and the management team, as well as patient associations. And it was uh, a joint decision uh, that was taken to make antiretroviral treatment free of charge. And this was considered a top priority for all. Associations actually took this up in front of the Parliament, and activism in front of the Parliament for free ART uh, resulted in discussions being held with the Minister for Health. Uh, the Minister actually recommends to move to free care in Bagati and countrywide, and this was the first step towards uh, seeking funding for ARVs. Uh, from other sources, and we all agreed that that should be a priority for Kenya. When further, the study was presented as an oral by the hospital director in the Bangkok World AIDS Conference. The paper was subsequently published in the Transactions of the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene with full MOA support and co-authorship, and the paper was used as a tool for advocacy against payment for ART and the need to fund free ART for all in Kenya and beyond. The key take home lessons that I think uh, this study um, um, highlights uh, is first be vigilant when you see opportunities for operational research in your setting. Negotiate well before you start the study. If we had not bought on the Ministry of Health in true partnership, this study would never have uh, been published um, and the findings would never have been disseminated. It pays to be inclusive, uh, both in terms of authorship, in terms of discussions, uh, with the Ministries of Health uh, and particularly with our colleagues uh, and having more on board sometimes um, helps you, uh, and particularly the stakeholders, to take responsibility and co-ownership 
do not forget to bring in their associations. They are very legitimate. And when they manifest themselves or protest in front of the parliament, they are listened to. Uh, and finally, timeliness is very important. In this study, we didn't wait for large sample sizes. It was not needed. And the important lesson learned is sometimes such evidence is enough uh, to trigger policy and practice change. Thank you very much. Thank you.